Hi guys, today we're looking at the British Infantry by Airfix. This is in the uh, the older scale H000 or H000, it's roughly 176. Um, small little guys, uh, these are from the 1970s, uh, sort of quite an old uh, moulding and um, they're not in production at the moment. Still readily available on eBay and various sites like that. You see here by the packaging it says it's new, although these were released in 1973. The boxing however uh, on the back I'll show you in a moment uh, shows a date of 19. 80, so they were at least seven years old, but they were still uh, calling them new. Um, images the front, as you see there, is a nice straightforward uh, piece. It just shows the uh, Bren gunner there carrying the gun slung over his shoulder and an ammo uh, box in his right hand. Uh, this is a figure that is contained within the box. Um, it's said there's 48 pieces, not actual size, luckily enough. Um, and that's basically the front of the package there. Nothing more exciting than that happening there. That particular range from Airfix, uh, this was the kind of the style of the box at the time. Um, side of the box again, nothing more exciting on those. Um, again, the usual warnings, don't give the children under three years of age. Although these days you'd want to be nearly in your thirties before they give you something that size. The actual size down here shows a couple of the figures. You have uh, stretcher bearers here. You have a guy who looks like he's marking a mine or something. Uh, he's armed with a Sten gun. Then you have the cover figure there again, which is the guy with the brand. And a nice picture of an officer there uh, with a lanyard for his Webley pistol. The uh, the figure itself in the box isn't as good as that, unfortunately. But um, it's still a nice little figure at the same time. Um, again, there's the date at the bottom, 1980. So an older uh, release, as I say. Um, a lot of the stuff I do is kind of the older, more kind of classic, shall we say, um, uh, figures that are uh, available or were available at the time again it's kind of from a nostalgia perspective i use a lot of the older stuff for uh, wargaming and that kind of thing um, it's just basically that's what i'm interested in i do have some newer stuff of course obviously and you've probably seen some of the videos on that um speaking which you might have a look at some of those and like and subscribe if you would it'd be greatly appreciated so let's have a look at a couple of the figures here and see what i've done with them shall we just put the camera down here for a moment see if we can stabilize that okay so at the front here you can see a range of the uh the figures I've painted up, we'll just start at the side here and have a quick look at them. Uh, this guy here is the uh, is, is a Sten Gunner, he's lying down. Oops, he's falling down. Uh, he's lying down, uh, kind of creeping along or whatever it is, he's armed with his Sten. Another Sten guy there adjacent to him. Um, he's the guy who looks like maybe he's marking a mine or something like that. Kind of a strange figure to be honest, which isn't really doing much. Um, then you have a, an advancing infantryman here. Let's see if we can get a look at this guy. Yeah, there we go. Very reminiscent of the uh, Airfix uh, German infantryman, kind of in the same pose, the same kind of uh, body shape to that, some kind of positioning. Um, and here we have a Bren gunner here. I like this pose, actually. Uh, this particular one, he's not actually firing his weapon, um, but as you can see, he's kind of uh, crouched down. Maybe he's ready to make a break for it across the street or that. Um, nice detail on the, uh, the brain, actually. Um, and here we have a uh, radio operator. Now I'm not sure if the radio actually matches in with anything that ever saw service or even existed. Uh, I think they're kind of more of a generic sort of a, a sculpt really on those. Um, as you can see now, I usually just basically give them the basic color paints. I think I was Humbrol uh, 26 uh, matte and uh, maybe 72 I think maybe for the webbing. Some sort of a brown then for the rifle and just a metallic uh, kind of a grey for the uh, any metal work on the, on the weapon itself. Um, here's our Bren gunner here again, the standing guy from the cover. Um, I think we can probably see the detail on the Bren isn't bad there if the camera will pick it up. Uh, quite a nice little sculpt there again. He's one of the better figures in the, uh, the set actually because um, his legs are kind of, kind of normal looking. Some of the other ones are a little bit spindly. Um, but not a bad sculpt, uh, to be fair. Um, now, next to him, we have this guy who looks like he's uh, trying to find the rest of his battalion or something. Um, not a great figure, really. You kind of get three or four of these in the, the set. Um, not the most utilitarian of pieces. But at the same time, I mean, one would have been enough, but hey, there you go. Um, sculpt on it isn't great. Legs are a bit skinny. Uh, rifle is kind of indistinguishable, uh, and he's not doing much. Um, here we go again with another uh, kind of a poorly uh, sculpted rifle. I'm presuming the rifle is supposed to be um, in the Lee Enfield um, 303. Um, it's hard to, it's impossible really to be honest with you to distinguish what type of rifle that is. It's a real generic, it's a poor sculpt to be honest with you. Again, uh, kind of legs are a bit skinny, uniform's a bit tight. Um, the sculpt isn't brilliant on, on most of them to be honest with you. I have quite a few of these and it's sort of a 
it's not just one particular set or one particular packet it's uh, our box it's uh, across the board here's the officer again again uniforms a little bit tight poor sculpt on the webley revolver to be honest with you um uh, well you can just about make out the lanyard there which uh it's kind of a nice uh, nice feature um kind of a weird pose as well i think myself kind of an odd awkward sort of a running pose it looks kind of quite more first world war than second world war if you ask me but and probably wouldn't have been wearing the uh, peak cap in combat but a lot of time manufacturers used to do that in uh just to denote officers or various units, the whole headgear argument comes into play there again. Again, uh, indistinguishable rifle, presumably again, as supposed to, supposed to be a Lee Enfield, obviously. Um, looks like 1937 pattern webbing, very little uh, equipment, nothing at all really other than the water canteen, ammo pouches at the front. Nothing uh, particularly spectacular there, which is a shame really, um, because uh, Airfix being a British company, one would have expected that uh, the British troops would have been uh, one of the better... Um, better sets released but that's what you have there and uh, there's the kneeling version of the uh, the, uh, the rifleman again nothing spectacular but you know it does the job and uh, so I do these kind of more nostalgic perspective but um, I will use these because I've put the bother of uh, putting them together now here's something a little bit a uh, little bit more interesting a little bit of conversions as if you've ever seen any of my videos you know that I like to convert things. Um, this is the lying down Sten gunner and the guy with the uh, Sten gunner in the kneeling position. Uh, just removed the, the weapons and used a mortar from the NATO uh, paratroopers by Matchbox. If you've uh, seen my video on that, uh, if you haven't, have a look. But if you have, you'll uh, notice that I used a mortar from SergeantMess.co.uk, who uh, do a nice range of white metal bits and pieces. Um, but in this case, what I did was I utilized the mortar from that set because uh, the figures themselves are a little bit smaller, a little bit kind of thinner in that, and um, kind of a regular size 172 sh uh, scale mortar looked a little bit a uh, little bit large for what I wanted it for. But that turned out pretty much okay, I reckon, myself. Um, again, utilizing the same figures, just removing the weapons. Um, I gave them a Vickers machine gun, which is actually from the uh, Airfix 8th Army set, I believe. And um, the uh, stand is actually off the Matchbox Anzac uh, Vickers. Um, so you can kind of see there, just uh, give it a little bit of a kind of a paint up and a bit of a dry brushing or that. And uh, off you go. Now I probably will put in an ammo box and a few bits and pieces in there, just finish that off and make it look a little bit more complete. But it gives you um, a heavy weapon, um, heavy machine gun, as the uh, the range itself didn't come with um, any Vickers machine guns or mortars, so I had to kind of uh, manufacture my own. Um, here we have uh, another interesting piece, again utilising the same figures, just to show that you can do a lot with the same basic figures. You can probably see where the Sten gun was removed there, didn't do a very good job of that. Um, and that's a little two inch mortar by um, by Sergeant's Mess again. As I'm not advertising these guys, it just that's where I got the stuff. I find them a good little company, uh, their the stuff they do is quite decent. Um, actually there is the white metal two inch mortar aforementioned. So basically just, uh, that's all it is, you just plonk it in between the two figures, paint it up, and off you go. Um, now I have no anti-tank element to this particular battalion at the moment, this is going to be used for rapid fire. So I might use a Piat R, I was thinking, um, this is again from Sergeant Smith, uh, a boy's anti-tank rifle there for early war stuff. Might try one of each. And these are little packets you get from Sergeant Smith, uh, it's uh, early war British infantry, small arms, uh, a few bits and pieces inside and that, uh, three or threes and odds and ends. So quite good little stuff. Um, also with the uh, the Airfix set, this is the plastic actually, they came in a green plastic and they had a habit of putting these kind of uh, these little features in here, kind of maybe wounded guys or whatever it was. I always kind of consider these things kind of a wasted pose, but at the same time, you know, this actually does something, it's quite a nice little piece and the detail is actually quite good on the, um, the wounded figure there, he actually seems quite relaxed for a lad who's been wounded, he's got his hand behind his head. Um, but a uh, nice little piece, in fairness, I uh, couldn't really fault that. Uh, I haven't utilised it, I haven't painted it up, uh, but I might do in future um, for maybe some background stuff uh, in wargaming or whatever, I haven't quite decided. Um, one particular uh, argument about these guys is that the sculpt is very, very bad. And people will say, you know, oh, well, it was 1973 when they were released, you know, give it a break. Um, things weren't as good then as they are now. I mean, you know, there you have your very basic uh, infantryman there, again, the rifleman. Uniform isn't great, and um, you know people will argue that it's unfair to try and compare these to modern examples. Here, for example, is a um, 
Revel British Infantryman, uh, larger scale a little bit obviously as you can see, but a lot more equipment. Even Airfix themselves, they released um, some British Infantry uh, new tooling in oh, about 2012 thereabouts, maybe a little bit earlier. Um, and did a nice job of them uh, to be fair um, not a hundred percent but uh, still suffer from kind of uh, odd body proportions here and there but they're not bad um, but my argument would be that the other sets that were released around the same time as these guys such as the uh, German infantry uh, the British 8th army and most notably probably the Africa Corps who I'll be doing a review on fairly soon um, the Africa Corps in particular had a beautiful sculptor, one of the most magnificent uh, sets Airfix ever, Airfix ever released um, and they were only released a year or so later than these guys and it makes you wonder why was there no continuity in the sculpt um, in that particular company at the time now, it's so long ago I don't know if anyone knows why, I don't know who did the sculpts for these guys I'm not even sure if it's uh, possible to find out who or why the, uh, that particular situation occurred uh, I think it's just a bit disappointing that some of the sets um, have a little bit of inconsistencies regards that even within the sets in some cases uh, most notably the um, British uh, where are we talking about the uh, British Eighth Army have a little bit of var variance in the sculpt but they're actually quite a good set in fairness uh, German Infantry again um, variance in the set and uh, American uh, US Marines or American Infantry as sometimes they're termed but um, as I say, these are small arguments and they're very, very old sets and a lot of people actually don't use them anymore. As I say, I do because I just like the older stuff. But that's kind of the situation with those guys. Um, very straightforward. As I said, I will be using them on the tabletop for rapid fire. I put the effort into painting them and, and all that. Uh, as I say, my usual uh, disclaimer, not the greatest figure painter in the world here. So, uh, you know, a uh, little bit of allowance there, if you would. Um, all I do is I use the traditional methods of uh, brush, humbrol, matte enamel. Use the recommended colours um, where possible um, or a match up with an online conversion car car chart where, uh, where I can't find the original. Um, and I literally just give it the basics. Uh, sometimes I dry brush. Probably should have done in this case actually, but I didn't. Um, but I always give them a rub of Citadel's uh, Null and Oil just to give it a little bit of shading in that. And I find that that does kind of uh, bring up a little bit of life into them and a little bit of depth. But um, that's basically it with the... Uh, the Airfix uh, British Infantry um, set from Airfix, uh, as I say, uh, 1973 release, um, still available out there. Um, you can get them with packaging or unpackaged on eBay and various other sites. And if you like the kind of uh, the older stuff, uh, you know, then no, no harm in picking up a set of these guys. As I say, don't be expecting massive detail. Um, but then again, you know, when we were kids, we weren't too worried about that. And in fairness, as I say, if you are uh, looking for detail, other sets will probably be more uh, applicable. But at the same time, nice to have these particular guys. Uh, so lads, if you'd like and subscribe, that'd be great. Try and, try and grow the channel a small little bit in the coming months. And, um, you know, just be uh, greatly appreciated if you guys did that for me. Um, so look, I'll leave you with that. We'll be coming back with another review for some more stuff uh, fairly shortly. We have a couple of kits, some old, some new, uh, some more figures to review. Again, some old, some new, and some more wargaming adventures with my young lad. And um, we are doing, going to do a uh, large uh, World War II aircraft project uh, that he's going to get involved in. So uh, from that perspective, that might be interesting to any of you who have kids and want to get them into the hobby. So look, I'll leave you with that, guys. That's the British Infantry by Airfix uh, from 1973. Um, nice bit of artwork there. So uh, we'll talk to you again, guys. Take care. All the best.